hope you're having a good Thursday. I thought today I would go ahead and share one of my more significant astral projection experiences. Now this happened a few years back, um, three, maybe four years back. I was up one night and it was pretty late. Normally I don't stay up late, but that particular night I was very focused on studying um, electromagnet electromagnetic influences on things as far as um, levitation goes. And the main thing I remember focusing on and really studying, uh, one of them was Coral Castle. If you haven't looked into Coral Castle, that's C-O-R-A-L, Coral Castle. It was built down in Florida single-handedly by a man that immigrated here from Europe. And he had a broken heart, and he built this thing all by himself, and he was not a large man. Um, so he did have one device, and magnets were used in that device, um, which helped him move these huge, huge, huge stones and build this whole thing. And he never let anybody watch how he did it. So anyway, I've always been first fascinated by that and decided that um, you know that's worth looking into that's something I'm very interested in so I was studying that and a few other correspondences as far as um, sound waves the use of sound waves and um, different things and how they correlate with each other and I was wide awake wide awake and it got to be about past midnight, and I thought, well, I should probably go to sleep. And uh, some, I felt this, I, I don't know if I could say it as I felt it or I heard it, but there was this pop right you know, in the center of my head, in the center of my head. And I didn't realize it at the time, but apparently that was my pineal gland decalcifying. So anyway, the pop happened, and all of a sudden, I was very tired, and I kind of heard, I say heard, it's not like you hear a voice, but in my head, it was like, okay, lay down and go to sleep. But right before that happened, I should say, I was so focused on trying to understand this situation, and I felt like I was very close to understanding something, and I thought, you know, I should um, try focusing on this in a lucid dream, do some lucid dreaming and see if I can find more pieces to the puzzle. Then the pop happened. Then it was time to lay down. I laid down and I heard, you know, now just relax your entire body. And I relaxed my body from my toes to the top of my head. And as soon as that happened, I was very relaxed and immediately, boom. As soon as that happened, I can't even describe how quickly things happened. I want to say faster than the speed of light. As soon as I could have a thought, uh, I would say there's two different forms of thought that happened um, while this astral projection experience happened. There was sort of background thoughts where I was mulling things over and there were directive thoughts where it was like a decision thought and as soon as I would have that thought the thing would happen. This was, um, I would say it probably actually had to be about four years ago because I, um, my, I've been divorced almost five years. This, it'll be five years this August. So I had been probably divorced for about a year. And so I, the reason I share that is because the first thing that happened was I was in this room. And this room it was almost like a lecture hall or a classroom. I'm not really sure how to describe it except that it was bright white. Everything in it was bright white. Everybody was dressed in bright white clothing. The light was super bright in there. And there were people um, in chairs facing away from me, facing to the front, like facing to the front of the classroom. And I was in the back with some other people 
and I realized that I was there with my ex and I was annoyed. I was annoyed because I realized I was having an astral projection and I was very excited about this astral projection and I kept thinking, why is he here? You know, I was pretty annoyed that I knew he was there. But anyway, it was just kind of like when I describe background thoughts, those were my kind of background thoughts. I was sort of, you know, my arms across my chest, sort of tapping my toes, impatiently waiting. Somehow I knew when I was having these thoughts that we had to wait for the people that were sitting and paying attention. Uh, they, it was like they were getting some sort of a, a download, uh, informational download, instructional download of some sort before we could go do what we were going to go do. So for whatever reason, I knew this was for the best, and he had to be there, and so I waited. And then when they were done getting their download, uh, he came up to me, and we kind of together just made this little vortex and shot off. And then the next thing that happened was we were at this space where um, we were outdoors, and it was sort of this dark carnival atmosphere. If you've ever watched Moulin Rouge, the introduction to Moulin Rouge, how everything's sort of in shadow and that almost almost like a creepy carnival vibe, not totally. Anyway, we were at this sort of outdoor fair and I had this feeling of Ireland and don't ask me why, except that it was very hilly. There were all these green hills, um, but everything was um, sort of in shadow. It was, I guess, going into evening or something. and. It was sort of this outdoor market meets this outdoor fair situation. And we were there with our twins. We have twins together, boy-girl twins. So we were there and we were going through the different, by the different stalls and seeing what people were doing and what people were selling. And then we were at this space where it was um, like an outdoor carnival where there's different rides you can ride. and. I remember watching the twins were on this ride and we were both watching them on this ride. They were spinning around on this ride and they were laughing and having fun. And then I realized we were there together um, because this is something that the twins wanted. They wanted us to be back together. And also my ex is a very um, stocky built kind of guy. And I felt that he was there also to represent sort of um, physical protection. That was the feeling I got. I don't know why we weren't physically threatened, um, but that was the feeling I got. So anyway, we were there and we were watching the twins have fun and they were smiling and he was kind of smiling and I was smiling just because we were enjoying watching them have fun. And then I started noticing these... Um, these entities, these, I don't want to say people, but it was like they were people, but I didn't get the same sense I would get with other human type people that were paying a little bit too much attention to us. They were a little too curious about us. They were watching us a little too hard. And I caught one of them and he, I say he, because it's male energy, kind of gave this creepy smile, like, I don't know, I didn't like it. And so I decided at that point that we were drawing too much attention and it was time to go. As soon as I had that thought, that sort of decision-making thought, we were out of there. My ex was gone, I guess he went back home, and I was back at my house with the twins, and we were in my son's room, and... He and I, have you ever, like, where you hold hands with somebody and you spin around and around and kind of make this uh, centrifugal force type circle together? We were doing that kind of in the air. And I remember looking down and seeing my daughter just kind of watching us and smiling, but she was just quietly observing. And everything was happening so fast, and um, I started to feel a little out of breath, even though I wasn't in my physical body. I wasn't physically breathing uh, in the astral 
and I realized it was a school night and I should probably put everybody to bed and get back to bed myself. As soon as I had that thought, she was back in her bed, he was back in his bed, and um, I kind of went around the house and checked on everything and decided I need to get back into my body, into my bed. As soon as I had that thought, I was back in my body. And um, it was that feeling, have you ever had a feeling where you your mind's awake but your body's not awake yet and you're trying to get your body to wake up? It was that sort of feeling. And I could feel it, the whole bed was vibrating. My whole body was vibrating. And I was trying to focus on getting you know, properly back into my body and having control over that again. And it was sort of like, the only way I can describe it is, um, have you ever seen Kill Bill? When Uma, Thurman, Uma Thurman's character first gets out of the hospital and she's in that truck and she's just trying to focus on moving her big toe. I think it's her big toe. <laughs> um, that was what I was trying to do with my pinky. I was just trying to gain control over my body again and wake up fully. I couldn't totally wake up. And then when I did wake up, I wrote everything down in a journal because I wanted to remember everything. And I may be leaving some aspects of this out, but I'm giving you the general gist of what happened. And um, the vibrating stopped. I came back into my body and I was able to get up out of bed and I was kind of breathless and really it took me physically in my physical body about three days to recover from that experience. I felt very just drained and um, I drank a lot of orange juice to make me feel better. I don't know if anybody else has had that experience but that's what happened on this particular experience with me. And um, there's something else I wanted to remember to share about it. Oh yeah. That creepy entity did, uh, he did some kind of a trace. He followed back to my house. I could sense him in my room and I had to make him leave. And after that it was fine. There was no more trouble. Um, but anyway, it was, it may sound strange to you guys, but the reason why this one was so significant was, you know, the, the various ways things happened and the various things that showed up. And I had control, but I didn't totally have control. And I'm sure that's because of the different people that were we were experiencing this together. You know, the twins' energy was there. My ex's energy was there. And so it was this synergistic experience. And... Um, just the speed at which you can have a thought on the astral realm and it happens is so fast it can just blow your mind. Anyway, um, I have much more to share on astral projection, different experiences, and um, different resources I'd like to share, and I'll get those up pretty soon. But I just wanted to kind of get this one done and out of the way so I can move on to the other things I'd like to share. I hope this finds everybody having a really good Thursday. It's kind of cloudy out today, kind of gray. Um, but hopefully somebody else is having a beautiful sunny day. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. And many blessings to everybody. Bye.